Hey there, Virgo. Welcome to Divine Conversations and welcome to February of 2022. Thank you guys so very much for tuning in. So if you are new here, hello, my name is Eric. It is so wonderful to meet you. Uh, please make sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already done so. Welcome to the family. So keeping up with last month's uh, uh, format, we are going to be splitting this video up into two sections the first section is going to be speaking to virgo rising and that is from the true sidereal point of view not tropical or mainstream so this is going to be different from what you understand mainstream astrology to be if you are watching this as a virgo in the mainstream situation but you're interested i would highly recommend that you check out the first half of this reading yeah the second half of this reading is going to be a big old general energy pull for the sign of Virgo. And that part is non-denominational. So if you are more oriented towards the mainstream tropical astrology side, you might just want to tune into the second half of the reading. But again, I encourage you to investigate and see what sidereal might represent for you. If you have never seen your sidereal chart and you are interested in gaining a copy of it, I would be very happy to provide it to you free of charge. Just send me an email. My email address can be found in the description box below, divineconversations2711 at gmail.com. Shoot me an email. Let me know you're interested in receiving your chart and I would be very happy to provide it to you. I also provide services in terms of doing readings. So if you're interested in a sidereal reading or you're interested in just a general tarot reading or you would like a combination of both, Again, send me an email. Let me know that you're interested in readings. In the description box below, I do list some of the options that I have available for you in terms of tarot readings, or excuse me, tarot readings. So um, read through that if any of that interests you, or if you just like to get a general reading and you don't know what to go with, send me an email. I would be very happy to get you all set up. Yes? If you would like some extra content from me throughout the month, check us out on Patreon, patreon.com slash divine conversations. The link to that can also be found in the description box below. Yes, that's a great way to join the community, to join the family, but also to, to provide uh, support to the channel. Without you guys, I would not be able to be here. So thank you so very, very much. Yes. All right. So with all of that said, let's talk to Gemini Rising. Not Gemini, oh jeez, not Gemini rising, excuse me. Let's talk to Virgo rising. Hi, Virgo. I'm so sorry, I just did Gemini's reading. I'm doing your reading, both you and Gemini today, because today is a Mercury day and your ruling planet is Mercury. And I'm pretty sure you, are, you have not missed the fact that Mercury has been in retrograde. And depending on when you're watching this reading in February, or maybe if you're getting an uh, early jump on it in January, um, well, no, I'm sorry. Depending on when you're watching the reading in February, Mercury may have gone direct by this time because Mercury will be stationed direct fully by the 6th of February. But I say all that to say the uh, retrograde motion of Mercury may not have been lost on you. Sorry, I had to pause there for a second. Um, okay, so Virgo, the title for you this month is It Is Okay to Express Yourself. More specifically, more importantly, it is okay for you to express this new version of you that seems to be emerging during this time. And the main reason why Spirit is saying that to you right now is because it feels like your, your desire to be of service to people is in opposition, or at least it feels like it is in opposition to the changes that you're making for yourself right now. And you're kind of sitting here wondering if you should even put these changes in place if you should even implement these changes because what about the people around me? How is this going to affect the people around me? And I'm trying to shuffle the cards here and the cards are kind of getting all jammed up. So, okay, that does feel like the primary blockage for you right now. But you are being encouraged and empowered to express this newness within you, Virgo. It is okay for you to express the truth of yourself. So last month in January, we were talking about how there was an, a feeling of coming out of the closet for you in terms of some new reality or some change that is happening, some sort of death or transformation, death and transformation that is happening within you. And while you may not have in that moment of January, when all of this stuff was coming up for you, you may not have taken the actions to say anything or to speak to it or to do anything about that change. It may have just been a time for you to get acquainted with it and like allow it to like 
settle into your mind or allow yourself to marinate in it. It could have been a moment where you were finally admitting the truth of this to yourself, which would be the first step in this process, okay? Uh, but you're being encouraged to express this because even though you do have a strong desire to be of service to people and to help people, to heal people and all that kind of stuff, that doesn't mean that you have to lose your sense of self in the process, okay? So um, the effect this would have on the people around you would is a topic of concern for you, which as a Virgo, that is understandable. However, Virgo, uh, but for some of you, getting tripped up on that aspect kind of feels like an element of stalling just gonna put that out there with that said uranus which has been in your eighth house uranus has been moving retrograde for the collective in aries in terms of sidereal astrology right and that is in the sign of ourselves our sense of identity for you specifically virgo rising this has been happening in your eighth house driving a sense of transformation and as i was channeling this message for you i heard uranus say specifically and i quote I wouldn't drive or influence this transformation within you for nothing. This is not an arbitrary thing. There is a real deep purpose to this. So allow yourself, Virgo, in this battle that you may be having in terms of like, what do I do about this? Like the people around me may not like this so much. There's a reason for this change. Again, it's not arbitrary. So go with it, work with it, follow through with it specifically is what I just heard, okay? With all that said, let's get into the chart. So what you see in front of you is the chart for Virgo rising for February of 2022. And as you can see, Virgo, there's a lot of energy here in your fourth house. The core of this situation for you is um, a, a deep sense of self-nurturance and nurturing yourself in a new and different way, okay? But, the, but again, there's resistance to that, Virgo, because as I'm shuffling the deck here, the Two of Swords came out. And also that came out with the Ace of Wands. So yes, there is in fact a new way of moving forward, something new that you are inspired towards, some new, something new to pick up here and move forward with, but there is a sense of denial for that, Two of Swords. And again, it's the questioning. What do I do about the people around me that I am of service to? And then, but then truth be told, if we're really being honest here, Virgo, here is that element of stalling. Two of Swords, denial, right? Um, denial, I don't know if I wanna do this. I don't even know if I should do this. But Virgo, this, this change is being influenced within you for a reason. Don't back down from it, okay? Yeah, overall energy is the Eight of Cups right now. So there, is, there are some things you are facing leaving behind, but you're kind of in denial about that. Um, I actually, before I move any further, Virgo, I want to I want to get a little I want to pull a little bit more on this. Can we get a little bit more for Gem for Virgo, please? Excuse me. In terms of this. Whoa. For some of you, Virgo, the need for this change is blindingly obvious. Okay? And here's the reason why. I'm skipping ahead a little bit in terms of my notes, but I, this is relevant. So here's the reason why. What has come out next? The first card that came out is the sun. With that is the seven of pentacles. And this is what makes this need for change glaringly or blindingly obvious. The sun brings forward revelations, okay? Um, and actually speaking in terms of the sun, last month in January, we did have that conjunction between, between the sun and Pluto, which happened technically on the 16th. Um, energy is fluid, so you didn't, you could, you could be, you could be really feeling the effects of this now, moving forward, now that we're into February, because there's a bit of pressure coming through here, especially with how Mercury went retrograde for uh, for a hot second, um, and especially also with Saturn creating kind of a bit of a blow roadblock for us right now until we implement these changes that we're being influenced by. Go and check the Mercury Retrograde video if you haven't done so already. It was a live stream that I did um, back in January. Check it out on my channel. You'll find it, Mercury Retrograde, a time to rewrite the programming. But Saturn is kind of creating a roadblock for us in terms of not being able to move forward until we make some sort of change, some sort of... I just heard, quite frankly, quite honestly, Virgo, mutually beneficial change, okay? But the sun brings forward that revelation. 
And then this, the conjunction between the sun and Pluto may have made it so powerfully strong for you, so powerfully obvious for you that you could not deny the fact that something needs to change here. Seven of Pentacles, you've been working in a certain way that does not serve you or does not bring forward the benefit for yourself or maybe even for the others that you intended on bringing forward. And thus, we must find a new way forward. The page of at the bottom of the deck here for you, Virgo, is the Page of Swords to Strength. Whoa, the Page of Swords to Strength to the Tower. You gotta let this go, Virgo. Okay, you gotta put your ego aside and allow the energies, the transformational energies here to come forward for you. The tower can be seen as a Mars Scorpio type of energy. And quite frankly, like I was saying, Uranus is up here in your ninth house in, I'm sorry, in your eighth house, nine degrees of Aries, but in your eighth house, moving through Aries, bringing a sense of deep transformation within the your sense of self or your soul the tower scorpio energy mars energy right okay making it blindly obvious there was something in my notes that i would oh so with that said let me get back to my notes here but with that said then a very beneficial energy in terms of this, especially in terms of your interpersonal relationships here. You do have Chiron, which is the wounded healer, right? Ruler of Ophiuchus. But you have Chiron in your seventh house. So there are some beneficial healing energies that you can tap into in terms of healing any sort of discrepancies or misunderstandings or something that may have arisen with your within your interpersonal relationships. And that even means if you ultimately end up losing certain people or certain alliances i'm hearing the energies the healing energies of chiron here in your seventh house could make it could help you with that healing process even if that healing process is internal even if you're no longer speaking to these people or you ended things have ended between you on bad terms there is uh, uh an energy of healing that can help you reconcile if only within yourself, and that's coming from Chiron in your seventh house this month, okay? I mean, Chiron's going to be in your seventh house for a while, but at the moment that we're speaking of right now, Chiron being in your seventh house is really helpful for you there, or at least can be helpful for you if you allow it, if you allow yourself to tap into it, right? But that would also mean, Virgo, allowing yourself to move forward with the changes you're being influenced into making, okay? Now, Okay, I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, what I do want to point out, though, um, Virgo, is that even though you have all of this energy here in the fourth house, which is all about transforming or, or well, the fourth house is all about self-nurturance. It relates to your early home and family life, the conditions that you experienced growing up as a child, the way that you learned to nurture yourself uh, through what it is, the programming that you received and the conditioning that you received from your early nurturing life also could represent how you nurture other people, right? So the big transformation in terms of that, yes, is all happening within your fourth, fourth house. And the strong, the dominant energy for you, Virgo, is about nurturing yourself in better, new and better ways. Getting into alignment with that, allowing yourself to move forward with that. The chariot just came out for you here. However, I feel like the biggest focus for you, Virgo, at least for the month of February, is the fifth house. Because... Now, the fifth house is all about self-expression, joy, and fun. The sun rules the fifth house. You have the sun transiting through your fifth house. And it's no surprise that this message that we have for you right now is all about expressing these changes for you that you are are coming to terms with or are realizing or are noticing needing to need to happen within you right allowing those changes to take place but not just that and this is the part that some of you are like oh god i really wish i didn't have to do this part but now you have to express it now you've got to let it out now you've got to let the sun within you shine on top of that virgo saturn mm-hmm Big Papa Saturn, the one that many of us really are not so fond of, is setting up a roadblock 
not necessarily a roadblock though, is setting up a checkpoint and is saying to you effectively, and this is part of what I said in the Mercury retrograde video. So go back and check that out if you haven't done so already, but Saturn is not going to let us move forward or expand unless we implement these changes. Okay. Not to say again, I said all this in the Mercury retrograde video, but not to say that, you know, you're going to be in this extremely stagnant state. If you don't do this, if you hit that checkpoint with Saturn and Saturn is not satisfied, but it does mean that you will be doomed to repeat the old cycles, at least until Saturn opposes the sun later on in the year. But take that with a grain of salt, Virgo. Okay. Your checkpoint here is allowing yourself to express allowing yourself to express your feelings. What is this? Okay, so what's just come out here now for you, Virgo, is the Queen of Cups and the Queen of Swords. And what this is saying here for you, Virgo, is it is what it is, Queen of Swords. What you're feeling, the truth of your reality, the truth of your emotional reality is what it is. There's no, there's really no sense in trying to deny this Virgo, because it's only going to make things dif more difficult for you. And the reason why you find yourself here overall energy is the eight of swords. The reason why you find yourself trapped here is because you are allowing fear to stop you nine of swords. And what you really need to do is just allow things to balance out naturally as they will the temperance card followed by, oh, wow. Followed by the world and death, the ending and the transformation, the transformation out of the status quo, the hierophant. The transformation out, out of a certain level of uh, tradition that is held by your family or your, your surroundings, the Hierophant to the Four of Wands. Instead, Virgo needs to shine forward here, the Hermit, and move forward in this new alignment and this new passion. King of Pentacles, King of Wands with the Hermit. That's you, Virgo. The Hermit is, at least. <laughs> Maybe even the King of Pentacles, too, because King of Pentacles represents Earth signs, right? Okay, moving forward. So, uh, next thing that I kind of want to point out to you guys is the new and the full moon. Now, we do have a difference this month. The new moon is in Capricorn, okay? New moon in Capricorn opens the doorway to start the new momentum forward, right? Capricorn is a cardinal sign. Capricorn wants to drive the forward, uh, the, the collective forward. Capricorn, being a cardinal sign, likes to start new things. Wants to get new things off the ground. Wants to get it off the ground, right? Followed by the full moon. And normally you would say, okay, the new moon is in Capricorn. Then the full moon is going to be in Capricorn. Not this month. It has a lot to do with the fact that in sidereal astrology, we have uneven constellations, yours being the biggest Virgo, arguably. And then we also have Ophiuchus fit in here. So that changes things fairly drastically, especially in terms of uh, tropical or mainstream astrology. But the big thing is not only just the implementation of Ophiuchus, but the fact that the signs are not all the same size. They never really were, to be honest. But okay, that's a different topic for another time. Uh, so because of this, let's see, let's try and let's animate this here for you. So the, the, the new moon happens on the first, you see that's in Capricorn. Let's fast forward here. Full moon is on the 16th, is it? Yes, just about the 16th. But as you can see here, the sun has now crossed into Aquarius. Okay. So the full moon in Aquarius empowers you to boldly stand in your new alignment and express that. Aquarius is an extremely benevolent energy. Aquarius is also related to Uranus, which has been driving extreme change. Again, this is why Uranus is saying to you, I would not have influenced this change for you, this death and transformation for you with if there weren't a reason. So that also means that by you stepping up and empower or embodying this change within yourself, you are going to be rewarded. Okay, the universe would not would not have you do all this if they were just going to 
reprimand you or punish you even for stepping into it. Okay. So allow the full moon. The moon will be in Leo. Wow. That's crazy. The moon is actually, I'm sorry. The full moon is in Leo, but the sun is in Aquarius. I'm getting all confused, whatnot, whatever, but it's really interesting. It's very interesting, Virgo. And I just realized this. But the moon will be in Leo at this time of the full moon. And the, the sun, which is in Aquarius, is in the fifth house. The sun rules the fifth house. Leo rules the fifth house. You are being empowered to stand up and express yourself in this new way. All right. Even if you do end up losing some people that were once on your team or losing some allies you used to have, those are not really your people then. If you are standing up and embodying this new truth in yourself and they don't like it. So even if that happens, Virgo, don't look at that as you're being punished. No, just look at that as your energetic connections are being cleared out. People are being shifted away from you so that the real people that really align with this new sense of who you are can come in and support you. As I was talking through all of that, Virgo, you did have the Three of Swords and the Five of Swords come out. And I really feel like this is just, oh, damn, I was going to say this, but then at the bottom of the deck, the, the deck already said it. I feel like this is seriously influencing you to move away, to stop fighting for that which is only causing you pain or breaking your heart. Okay. And then at the bottom of the deck, you do have the eight of cups here, which is walking away from this. I mean, I was getting walking away from it just from the five of swords because the five of swords is the type of energy of a lose-lose situation. And the best way to handle that is to not handle it at all. Lay your sword down and just walk away because it's not worth it. Regardless as to how things work out, even if you come out on top, right, you're still losing something. So I got the energy of walking away from the five of swords, but then at the bottom of the deck, ooh, at the bottom of the deck, the cards confirmed it with not only the Eight of Cups, but also judgment underneath that. It is time to let this go. It is time to walk away. And that is kind of connected to this last thing that I have here for you in terms of my notes, at least. So uh, back in May, not... What in God's name? Okay, for some of you, back in May, this has relevance to something that may have happened back in May of last year of 2021 but what i meant to say was back in january we had a square between mars and neptune now for you specifically virgo that might have been very very scary here's why mars was transiting through ophiuchus which for you is in the third house. And that square between Mars and Neptune was kind of bringing up old ways of action-oriented energies, everything within the Mars realm. And specifically, it was very much like ways that you went about certain things in the past, right? Ways that you took action, what it is you were driven towards, how it is you acted towards things, how it is you reacted or responded to certain things, certain cringeworthy moments, stuff like that, right? The square between Neptune, which is in its home sign of Pisces, and Mars was opening a doorway to get a deeper understanding of those things, to bring certain things that may have been deep, 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 hidden under the surface, open the doorway towards that. I did do a reading, a uh, video for that. Uh, it's the Mars square Neptune. Um, sh I believe it's titled uh, Shadows of... Um, Shadows of what? Shadows of... Hold on a second. Shadows of Efforts Past. If you haven't watched that video, go check it out because that could help you get some insight as to what this Mars square Neptune cycle was like for you. But speaking specifically, Gemini, uh, Virgo, excuse me, um, Mars was transiting through Ophiuchus and that was in your third house. Third house is ruled by Mercury, your ruling sign. The third house is all about communication. Uh, for me, as a reader, it represents the house of commerce. 
which kind of represents money and, and, and business and finances and kind of just a little bit, but it's really about communication. Okay. Stepping out into the world and really starting to communicate with people interacting with siblings or your close family or something like that. Uh, the third house can also represent your community, your immediate community, not just your, your immediate family, but like the people that live in your town, your surrounding town, the, 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 the area that in which you live, that you're most familiar with. Right. But what this might have been bringing up for you, Virgo, were actions that you were taking to be of service to others that were extremely detrimental to your own self very much an element of for some of you intentionally for others for others of you not so intentionally but leaving yourself out in the cold and i don't know how much i want to say it was intentional what was more intentional it feels like was you just desiring to be of service to others but that's where we also get into the north and the south nodes because for you virgo Your, the, the South Node, the Universal South Node is in Libra. And the South Node represents the past, what it is we experienced in the past, the lessons that we learned in the past, in past lifetimes specifically. Um, the North Node is moving forward, is what we're driven forward in this lifetime, what we're meant to learn, what we're meant to experience, what we're meant to learn from through the experiences that we have in this lifetime. How this is connected is that I feel like the South Node in Libra represents a certain level of interacting with individuals in order to keep the peace and keep the balance, which in many cases could have just been super enabling. Instead of really driving change or instead of really helping people in the best way that we could have, we may have ended up just enabling certain negative or destructive or codependent tendencies. And Virgo, for you specifically, that could have been a hell of a lot was coming up that was coming up for you as Mars and, and Neptune were squared up. But again, the focus was not on the other people outside of you. The focus then feels like it was how that was of detriment to you ultimately, because now Mars is moving into your fourth house. There is a huge fourth house focus here with Pluto being here for you. All of these conjunctions that are happening with Pluto are happening in your fourth house. It driving and influencing change in how you love and nurture and care for your own self, which also would naturally change how you love and nurture and care for others around you, which is what you're focused on anyway, which is what you have such great intention toward anyway. But Virgo, in order for you to really be of service to others, you have got to heal yourself love and nurture yourself in the best way, sh sh way, shape, and form. And no, that is not a cookie cutter, one size fits all type of way because you are a unique individual with unique needs. And while you may have been so hyper-focused and so hyper-aware of that in others around you, it may have been really hard for you to do that within yourself because maybe something that you truly needed as an individual was looked upon with distaste or disgust by the people around you that you serve. And thus, there was an element of leaving yourself out in the cold. So yes, that Mars and Neptune square up could have been super, super scary for you. How could I have treated myself in such a way? How could I have let myself go so much? How could I leave my own self out in the cold like that? Yeah, that might not have been comfortable or easy to face or accept, but you know what it did though, Virgo? It opened up the doorways, it opened up the pathways, it cleared the space for you to see just where you needed to go or just what your new target should be, the Eight of Wands. It, pre it presented you with a way out of that. Overall energy is the Page of Pentacles. So now, that was in January stepping into February, now you have a time, a, a, a moment, uh, an opportunity to express this newness within yourself. It is all about expressing it, Virgo. You can't get away from that. That, that is kind of like your final exam here before Saturn, Saturn hits you, you hit Saturn's checkpoint and you, you can either go in the new way two of wands. You can either go the new way 
Or you can stick with the easy way, which is detrimental to you to begin with. Two of Wands, you have a choice. You have a choice, Virgo. All right? Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Is this King of Cups in reverse, though? Should it be in reverse or should it be up? Right. Whoa! All right, these are the last bit of cards from the Tarot that I have for you, and then I'm going to get a closing message from the Magic of the Unicorn Oracle. But this choice here, Two of Wands, Virgo, uh... Be bold. You have the Knight of Wands to the Three of Wands. Be bold, Virgo. Take that new opportunity. Move in that new direction. Be a trailblazer, even if you're just blazing a new trail within your own life and your own sense of self-expression. Allow yourself to move forward with that. Knight of Wands, Sagittarius energy. Uh, you know, Venus has been retrograde in Sagittarius helping to change our values. So however you're being inspired to move forward on the new path in the new way, Virgo, just do it. The time of the King of Cups in reverse, which is emotionally mutable, is over. Death. And I had to sit here with the King of Cups in reverse for a hot second to really understand what it was saying. Because normally the King of Cups for me represents emotional maturity, emotional stability, being solid in your emotions. No matter what storm comes through, you are able to ride it out and not even be shook on your, on your throne, right? King of Cups in reverse is the exact opposite. Emotionally mutable, emotionally changeable, emotionally volatile. But for you specifically, Virgo, it was feeling like allowing or being manipulated emotionally to, to, to meet people where they are instead of meeting them halfway. Like you keeping your level of alignment, they keep a certain level of alignment, you guys meet halfway and then you can work together. No, the King of Cups in reverse feels like for you being completely overtaken emotionally by other people thus influencing the way that you were of service to them or the way that you nurtured them. That time is over or you are being influenced to transform out of that death, eighth house energy. Again, Uranus says to you, I would not have driven or influenced this change within you for no reason. Instead, now, where you're supposed to be moving to, Virgo, is overall energy, king of pentacles, strength, Solid. Solid in your sense of self. Understanding who it are, who you are and what it is you need as an individual and accepting that. Bringing that to the table for yourself. Being solid in yourself. Strong enough in yourself. Self-aware enough to say this is who I am. This is what I have to offer you. You can take it or you can leave it. And I mean that in the most loving way possible but I am not going to change just to make you happy anymore. Closing Oracle Guidance. Five shuffles for you, Virgo. One. Two. Three. Oracle guidance from my Virgos, please, spirit, for Virgo rising here. All right, cool. So you have a definitely have a master number here. Card number 44 is your overall energy. This is the big driving influence for you this month. 
I am presence. So your angels are definitely here with you. The angels, 44, right? Expand your stellar gateway. I am that I am. Very king of pentacles here. Look, it is what it is. I am who I am. There is nothing that can change that. Go on and get all Lady Gaga on people. I was born this way. I'm beautiful. I'm beautiful in my way because God makes no mistakes. I'm on the right track, baby. I was born this way. And check it. And look, look. And it's no surprise, Virgo. I mean, I literally did this on purpose, but just for you, I'm wearing my extra like guac shirt. Literally, Virgo. I did that intentionally just for you. Mainly because back in January, we were talking about someone coming out of the closet. You don't have to be coming out of the closet sexually if you are. Woo! I mean, congratulations to anyone that's coming out of the closet about something. But that's what this is about. Not just the LGBTQ community. Okay? Accept yourself for who you are. Embody that. Show that to the world. You were made this way for a reason, Virgo. And it was not to hide and change and be coerced into thinking that you're some pariah or you're a detriment to society or whatnot. No. The universe knows exactly what it's doing here. Okay? Two cards that have come out for you here. Card number 17. Go with the flow. Relax and trust. Accept what is happening. And then finally, you have card number three. Create your vision. Do what makes your heart sing. You are being nudged forward. Gemini got the same card. And Gemini has the same message. Makes sense. You're both ruled by Mercury, but you are being nudged forward. You are being guided, pushed to move forward. Start this new process in your life. Get this going. All right? Okay. I love you guys. I'm going to leave it there. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I'm going to pause, regroup, recollect myself, and then we will get into the big collective energies, the non-denominational side of this reading. Yeah? Stay tuned. Hello, my beautiful Virgos. Welcome to the non-denominational side of this general collective reading for the month of February of 2022. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. So this is the part of the reading that is going to be for my Vir... Did I say Gemini? I'm sorry. If I said Gemini, I'm sorry. Virgos, whatever. Uh, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Jupiter, Mar Jupiter, Mars, Mercury, whatever placement you have in Virgo that you are uh, curious about, this part of the reading is for you. Also, this doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what form of astrology you are most comfortable with, you are most familiar with. This is just a general card reading for the sign of Virgo for the month of February of 2022. Yes. Let's get started. I'm going to start with the tarot. We're going to give this five shuffles and we will see what messages we have for you this month. Yeah? For my Virgos. This is one. This is two for Virgo. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Mercury, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Pluto, whatever. Just whatever. Just Virgo. Three. Oh, also, if you're a cross watcher, then you most likely there are messages here for you too, potentially, if it resonates. Yes, this is four. And this is five for my Virgos here. For my Virgos, for my Virgos. All right, Virgo, I'm seeing yellow for you, okay? And, and yes, but with that yellow, I'm hearing self-expression. Now that's more of a fifth chakra throat chakra type thing, right? Okay. But you're being empowered to move forward with this. And that's why I'm seeing yellow. Take action. It's time to take action. Start moving in this new process. Start moving in this new direction. Whatever it is you're being influenced or guided to take up, do it. Now is the time to do it. Okay. What messages do we have for Virgo for February of 2022? Please spirit. For my beautiful, lovely, caring, loving, nurturing Virgos, what do we have? Woo! Starting you off with the path ahead, Virgo, three of wands. Okay. Nothing else has come out yet. I'm going to get more. 
but this is important. I don't want to scare anybody, but what I'm hearing with this Virgo is prepare yourself, get ready, take this seriously. There is a new path ahead of you. Okay. There is a new direction you're moving in. So prepare yourself mentally. You just like, just like Gemini, you feel like a bit of a trailblazer, mainly because both your energies are very concerned with the people around you right now. Okay. Uh, but for you, Virgo, you're, you're being guided to take this seriously. Like really own this. Take your moment. Take a moment. Sit down with yourself. Get in nature if you if it's comfortable for you, whatnot, whatever. But like sit down with yourself and really get prepared. Okay? Mentally, emotionally, like set your sights on the future. Set the record straight here. Like really prepare yourself. Again, I don't want to scare you. I just, it just feels really serious and somber. You've got work to do. Three of pentacles. Or at least... What I'm hearing is serious work has been done on yourself. You've been doing serious work on yourself. And now it's time to get that out there into the world. Now it's time to move forward with that. Uh, I'm hearing now is the time to start taking up the next steps in the process, which heavily involves expressing it. Yeah. What do you want to say to Virgo for this three of wands here? What do you want to say? Okay. All right, Virgo, this is why this is why spirit really wants you to like take this seriously and take a deep breath and really prepare yourself for what's to come because I was already kind of feeling this, but I didn't say it yet, but now it's being reflected in the cards. I feel like there's going to be opposition. I feel like there are going to become people coming towards you saying all types of things trying to get you to drop this new endeavor. 4 of pentacles, page of swords somebody coming to you okay seeking clarity i don't want to say all of these people are um childish or are acting in childish ways some people are just genuinely curious and would like to have a conversation with you about this would like to understand your motives here but the but this represents questioning why we cannot stay the way things are why we cannot stay with this foundation page of swords to the four of pentacles questioning why we cannot why we can't why we can no longer hold on to what it is we've been holding on to for so long and then here you are virgo with the facts king of swords well i can at least speak to you about this from my personal experience and here Here's my itemized list and all of my notes surrounding why I need to make this change for myself. I don't see you coming or uh, coming at this or approaching this type of energy as the Queen of Swords, obviously, because it's the King of Swords that came out here, but the King of Swords came out specifically. I feel like you have no problem explaining this to people or at least having a conversation with people about this. But I don't feel like you're approaching it from the sense of, you are trying to convince them to get on your page. I think this is just you being objective and saying, okay, here's why. At the bottom of the deck, overall energy is the five of cups to the seven of swords though. So this is that energy of people not wanting to let go, fearing, feeling sorrowful, woe is me type of energy dealing with the, the mourning of whatever it is that they seem to be losing. But some of you, some people may come at you and try to convince you from this point of view. That's deceptive, Virgo. And in that, that actually may even influence you to drive forward even more with the change, Knight of Wands, because some of you may realize as you're in this objective king of swords energy and you're just having a general conversation with someone laying out the facts while they're reacting <clears throat> from an emotional point of view you actually may become starkly aware of how you may have been enabling someone in the past 
or this person in the past. You may have actively been enabling these individuals or this individual to stay in this stuck, stagnant, codependent state. And by them flaring up at you like this, Page of Swords, the Four of Pentacles, it may, in the back of your mind, it may actually click. Whoa. That's what I've been enabling all along. This sorrowful energy where while I want to say, well, while I don't want to invalidate anybody's feelings, because from that person's point of view, the, uh, the, 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 the feelings of loss are very real. But there's also deceptive, deception behind it. Because it's not, it, it feels like they would be reacting from this emotional place in order to just keep the status quo, which is not what is intended here. So there's a level of deception behind this Five of Cups energy that you may be hearing about or experiencing from other people that are being expressed on behalf of other people. Five, now keeping it going with the bottom of the deck, five of wands. Yeah, there's the differing of opinion, but then underneath that is the chariot to the star. We're moving forward. We're driving forward to the eight of pentacles, to the seven of pentacles. We are moving forward. We are driving forward. We are going towards this new reality, this wish fulfillment here. Because seven of pentacles, what we had before is not working. It's not getting us what we want. It's not getting us what we wanted, where we wanted to go. It's not getting us what we desired this, that, and the third, okay? Um, I'm gonna leave these here. What other messages do we have for Virgo at this time for February of 2022, please, Spirit? Okay. What do you wanna say about this? Okay, Virgo. And it's interesting because the, this card came out for Virgo rising. You might want to go watch that. Even if you're not a Virgo rising, that could help you understand the influential change that's happening for Virgo right now. And some of it may resonate for you, okay? But this, the King of Cups, did in fact come out during that, during that moment. Um, during while I was talking about the uh, talking to Virgo rising and the message there was with the king of cups having come out but it being reversed at that time whereas now at this moment it is upright but with it being reversed at that time was speaking to emotional instability and not from like a lack of boundaries type of place emotional boundaries where at, where the queen of cups would represent it the King of Cups in reverse was representing emotional instability that causes you to be of service towards someone or to take action for someone strictly because of the emotion, the overwhelming emotion that is being pushed upon you. Virgo, some people around you, some of the people around you may have been able to emotionally manipulate you in this way. And that could also be another element to the deception of this of this five of cups energy here because someone could have literally been pulling on your heartstrings just saying certain things or acting in certain ways or 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 um speaking of certain situations either from an extremely emotional point of view or in a way that generates extreme emotion and then you ultimately get on board with what it is they're going for and now you're taking action for them but that action was manipulative you were manipulated into enabling this person or these people that's what the king of cups in reverse represented for virgo rising when it came out and that can kind of be like doing the right thing or trying to do the right thing thinking that you're doing the right thing but really you're being emotionally manipulated and thus you're being taken advantage of. Your desire to help, your desire to take action for people was being taken advantage of. Well, now you have it upright. And that's the exact opposite. So this is emotional stability. 
emotional security. No matter what storm is raging around you, Virgo, you can still sit pretty and solid in your throne and allow the storm to work, to, to run its course, and then we pick up the pieces after, right? It also represents doing some things that you know are not easy, but you know are absolutely the right thing to do. With that, Virgo, you have the Nine of Wands and the Six of Cups. So you're being encouraged to stand up, to really work on being emotionally grounded, balanced, and mature, to step into this new form of responsibility, and to persevere because it is leading you to greater emotional fulfillment, greater bliss, greater happiness, greater emotional fulfillment for the people around you as well. The Six of Cups represents soulmates, it represents the past, sure, but it also represents the e emotional reciprocity. And there's something about this change that is that you are driving here that you are being driven into which subsequently affects the people around you. There is something about this that is bringing emotional fulfillment or ultimately wing, will bring emotional reciprocity to these other people as well. And that's in the form of self-mastery. Ooh, at the bottom of the deck, Virgo, at this point, you have the three of pentacles. But with that, you also have the three of cups. That's very good. Uh, collective celebration. The collective being able to celebrate because the individuals were influenced into doing some self-mastery work, and now all of a sudden, out of nowhere, we find that the whole collective is stronger as a whole unit because the individuals have become fortified in a better way. But the only way that happens, Virgo, is allow the tower to fall and allow those individuals that have been stuck in this mindset to gain the enlightenment that they need as the tower comes down or as a result of the tower coming down, which then influences influence them to make certain changes in their lives. But Virgo, from your point of view, your role to play in all this is to not give in emotionally. King of Cups. And I know that's gonna be difficult. I just heard it's one of the difficult things, the most difficult things you will ever have to do in this lifetime. The big challenge for you right now or in this lifetime may be standing up for what is right on an emotional level and not giving in to enabling circumstances. I'm not gonna, okay, I'm gonna take some of that back. I'm not gonna say in your whole lifetime, but at this moment, that's the lesson, baby. That's the challenge. Virgo, it is okay to express yourself. You don't have to be so mutable, Virgo, that your sense of identity, what you need to feel loved and nurtured and cared for is completely thrown out of the window. You don't have to be so mutable that that happens to you. You can be mutable. You can be flexible. You can go with the flow while still holding to the truth of who you are and what it is you need. You deserve to be nurtured and cared for as well, Virgo, okay? Closing Oracle guidance for you. We're gonna get that from the Oracle of the Seven Energies. Five shuffles. One. Two. Closing Oracle Guidance for you from the Oracle of the Seven Energy. What's closing Oracle Overall, the message for you is card number three, Time Machine. And what this means to me, Virgo, is moving forward in time. No longer being stuck in the past. No longer being stuck in old wheel of fortune energy and with that i'm getting stepping off the karmic hamster wheel moving with the times 
Time progresses, naturally, constantly, without us having to do anything about it, without us being able to do anything about it. Time marches forward, and so shall we. Your final card here is... <laughs> okay, uh, one last thing. What came through in the Virgo rising part of the reading was the sun, the, the moon cycles. So the new moon this month is in Capricorn. And technically you would think, okay, well, if the new moon is in Capricorn, then that probably means that the sun is still going to be in Capricorn when the moon goes full. When Because the new moon is a conjunction between the sun and the moon, right? So they're literally crossing over each other. The full moon is when they're in opposition. So whereas the sun and the moon are in the same sign for the new moon, the moon will then be in the opposite sign for the full moon, right? But the sun will most likely still be in the sign it was in while the new moon happened. Not this month. This month, the sun will have progressed into Aquarius for the full moon. Okay, whereas the sun was in Capricorn for the new moon, it'll be at one, one or two degrees of Aquarius by the time we reach the full moon. But the real funny thing about this full moon, especially with the fact that your title, and I channeled the title of this reading before I noticed this aspect, but the title of your reading is, it's okay to express yourself. And in terms of Virgo rising, the new moon so the conjunction between the sun and the moon happens in the fifth house and then the the full moon where is going to be activating more energies of the fifth house because the sun will still be in your fifth house but the moon will be in leo for the full moon the fifth house is ruled by the sun the sun is in the fifth house for virgo rising leo also rules the fifth house the moon will be in leo virgo it is okay it is highly encouraged for you to express yourself at this time. And what is your final oracle card? Card number five, fifth house, fifth sign, Leo. The moon will be in Leo for the full moon. Body and soul. You are more than just a body. You are more than just a physical vessel to enact or be a servant, enact things for people, put the, do things for people, or be a servant to people. There is a soul to you. There is a unique energetic blueprint to you. There is a unique identity to you. All of that. Virgo. Listen to me very carefully. It is necessary for all of that to be taken into account if you are to be healthy and well to the fullest of your potential. It is requirement, both on your behalf as in terms of taking care of yourself and making sure you're set and good so that you can be able to be of service to others. And if others are going to be of service to you, that has to be taken into account on their behalf as well. It is okay to express yourself, Virgo. Card number five, body and soul. You are more than just a physical walking breathing meat suit. You are a soul as well with an identity and certain needs. I'm going to leave it there. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I love you guys so much. Like, I just fucking love you. Yes? So I'm sending you so much love. I hope you have a fantastic month. If you would like to get a personal reading with me, whether that be through tarot or astrology or both, I am available. All the information to that, well, at least my my email address and some of the readings that I offer can be found in the description box below. So read through that. Shoot me an email. Let me know you're interested in getting a reading and I will get you all set up. If you would like to get some extra content with me throughout the month, if you would like to join the unicorn family here, the unicorn herd, then check us out over on Patreon, Patreon patreon.com slash divine conversations if you're looking for a way to support the channel that is an excellent way to do so and as always please leave me a like 
uh, smash that like button, share this reading with a friend, this video with a friend, leave me a comment in the comment section down below, letting me know how this resonated with you, if it resonated at all. And as always, if you're new here, please consider subscribing. With that said, I hope you guys have a fantastic month. I am sending you all the love in the world. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading for the month of March. Yes? Beautimus. Take care. Bye. <laughs>